Hi everyone, my name is Susan and I'm so excited that you'll be joining me today for a virtual paint and sip. Uh, I know there's a lot going on in the world today, so I hope that this is a time for you to relax a little bit and get lost in the process. Um, before we get started, I wanted to just say a few things. These are things I always share with my students uh, before we do a paint and sip. Um, one thing is to just not judge yourself. Um, paintings take time, we do them in layers, so just cut yourself a little slack. Um, and the next thing is to trust in the process. So I will be painting everything that you will be painting, and at the end it will come together um, to create this really beautiful landscape. So just, you know, don't pressure yourself throughout this process. Um, another thing is that it's important to get some distance from your painting. So you'll be painting pretty up close, at some point or a few times throughout this, make sure you take a few steps back and just see um, how beautiful everything is coming together. Before we get started, I just wanted to review a few of the materials. Um, so I will be painting on a 12 by 16 canvas panel today. Um, it's fine if yours is bigger, smaller, it doesn't really matter. It could be cardboard. Um, whatever you have at home is, it will work out great. Um, we also have, I have three different brushes. So I have a large brush, a medium brush, and a smaller brush. Um, I have my pencil for our sketch. And then I have a cup of water, a few paper towels. And then um, I will be utilizing some palette paper. Um, and then we have our acrylic paints. We have red, blue, yellow, black, and white. So I generally like to use primary colors and then mix them together to build our other colors. So I will guide you through the color mixing process. Um, if you don't have palette paper, a paper plate will work just fine. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is drawing on our image. So make sure that you have the photo that we'll be using. Um, you can put it on your phone or you can print it out, whatever you want to do. Um, but make sure you have access to it. So the first step that I like to do is to draw a tick mark on each side of the canvas and that is right in the center of each side and that helps me know where the middle of the canvas is. Um, I'm going to draw pretty dark just so that you can see what I'm doing, but you don't really have to push that hard with the pencil. It's just a really rough sketch um, and just something that's um, easy for us to follow. So these are the tick marks I'm drawing. So again, just in the middle of each side of the canvas. Um, the next step will be to do our horizon line right across. Um, that's the top of the flowers, um, kind of the end of the rose. So um, what I like to do is use my fingers as measurement, and I would say utilize your thumb. And then that's where this line is. Um, it's not perfectly straight, so if yours isn't straight, that's fine. It kind of has a little bit of a curve to it. So right there like that. The next thing we'll be doing is utilizing what we call one point perspective. So what that means is that we um, create a point and then our lines all come from that single point. So I actually I'm going to be doing it in the middle of the canvas. Um, so I have my tick marks and I know where that middle point is. And I literally just draw a dot. Again, I'm making mine very dark and big so that you can follow along. That's right in the center of the canvas. And then all I'm going to go ahead and do is draw lines down from that. I'm actually going to draw one right down the middle. So that's going to meet my middle tick mark at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of go from there. Um, I'm not measuring anything. Nothing has to be perfect. Um, I think there's kind of beauty in the imperfection of this um, image here anyway. So we're going to go ahead and I'll just kind of draw a line down on each side. And again, these are guidelines for us to create our painting. I'm going to come down from each side. Again, I'm pushing really hard just so you can see what I'm doing. 
for bringing me home to push so hard. And as you'll notice, my lines are nowhere near straight, but that also is okay. I'm going to come all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to fill this whole bottom area down here. Again, we're going to fill this area in. Alright, so that's our one point perspective bit. Um, and then what I'm going to now go back and do is do some erasing. So I'm going to erase where this circle is. And I'm going to erase anything that's above our first line that we drew. So the next step will be to sketch in our trees. Um, if you're looking at the image, you'll notice that there's about four trees in the forefront and then several behind. So we're just gonna start with the four that we can see in the front. Um, the first bark and tree trunk is um, pretty far over to the left. And they're pretty skinny, so that's gonna be my first one. Um, then I'm gonna go over about three inches and draw on my next one. I'm gonna go over again another three inches draw on that one, and then another three. Um, I'd say I could even go a little further over with the second one that I drew. So I'm gonna erase that, and then I'm gonna pull that line over there. So right now we have our four tree trunks. So the next step will be just to sketch on the top of the trees. Um, the thing here is that these kind of look like a second grade tree. So again, don't judge it. It's just a guideline for us as we get to the painting. Um, it's just kind of these oval shapes. And this edge tree cuts off. The next one is touching. Again, I'm trying to draw dark just so that you can see what I'm doing nice and clearly. To my third tree, and then my fourth, and this one comes off the canvas. So nothing pretty here. These are just ovals sitting on top of two lines. Um, very basic, and just an outline for us to be able to start painting. Um, so that's our sketch right there. Um, the next step will be to start mixing some paint colors. So I know we're all painting the same image, but um, there's certain opportunities where we have where we can kind of individualize our painting. Um, and sometimes that's with color and then just other little techniques. So we are going to start um, by painting the sky. This is an opportunity where you can kind of change the color if you don't like exactly what you see. In the photograph or what I'm doing, you can kind of maybe create a little more of a teal colored sky or purple or whatever you would like. So I like to use my large brush for this. So again, this is my big brush. Um, I have my paints right here and I'm gonna actually start with some white. So I take a, you know, a decent amount of white, not too much, like a little chunk. I'll go ahead, I put that on my top paper or put on your paper plate. And then I start with just a little bit of blue. And the reason I start with the white is that if you have too much blue, it's much harder to get a lighter color than if you start with a light color and add a little bit at a time. So I just added a dab of blue. So I dip my brush in the blue. I bring that right into my paint. And then I actually like to bring water into this um, just to loosen it up a little bit. I generally like the canvas to show through some of um, the skies that I create. Before I get started, I am going to try to erase the tick mark up at the top. Again, I drew mine really dark, so um, it would most likely show through. You may want to do the same and then, you know, just brush off the canvas, make sure there's no eraser bits there. So I don't have to mix a ton of blue for this and I don't want to bring in a ton of water. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right over the sky area up here. And I'm doing horizontal brush strokes. You might like to do something more um, on an angle. That's something you'll discover as you create the painting. Um, I like to see my brush strokes and I also like to see the canvas coming through. So um, that's something you'll notice as I'm painting in general and really especially with the sky. So I like to make it kind of streaky. Um, I'm going to bring a little more blue into my paint so that you'll see some nice variation throughout. Um, and then just make sure you have enough paint on your brush um, and that it's loose enough with the water. So you'll see me dip it in the water a few times, but I'm not taking a ton of water on here. Now I'm going right on over our trees. So right on over these lines, because otherwise you'll have some funny white spots. So again, I've filled in this whole area. If you're using a real canvas, you might want to hit the side so it looks finished at the end. And again, I've left it kind of streaky. You can see some of my brush strokes and you can see a little bit of the canvas showing through. So right down on over the trees and right on over your pencil marks. So now the next step will bring, be to bring in some color into your sky. Um, and these are through the clouds. So there's some orange, some pinks, and some purples. Um, again, you wanna experiment with your brush strokes to see you know, how you kind of wanna create these effects. Um, for this, I'm going to be using my medium sized brush. Um, and then I'm going to again start with white. I'm going to bring white onto my palette paper. I'm going to bring in a little yellow and just a hint of red. So I'm going to start with a white base, bring in a tiny bit of yellow and a hint of red. And then I'll get this kind of nice uh, orangey with a very bright color. And again, it's much easier to bring paint uh, into the white than to make it too dark um, and have to work backwards. So if you need to restart mixing your paint, just go ahead and do that. Uh, you don't need a ton of paint here again, so just a little bit. So I have my medium brush. Um, and I'm not going to bring too much water into this yet. Um, these lines if you hold your paintbrush up to your image, you notice they're on an angle. And the first one starts right here, and I'm going to make these kind of circular brush strokes. And I'm going to pull them right along this edge right here. So I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. You'll notice some of the blue is coming through a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to stay consistent with my brush strokes. I'm going to head and do this next bit. And if yours is different from the photo, that's totally fine. It's going to be different from mine. It'll be different from your friends if they're also painting. Um, but the goal here is just to bring a little bit of color into the sky and have consistent brush strokes. So you'll notice I just dipped it in the water just to loosen up my paint a little bit. Again, just these circular brush strokes. So I'm basically making a C with my brush. And I'm pulling this paint right across. So I have these two lines here, and then I'm going to have a couple more coming across here. So I have one that starts from the left side of the canvas and works its way across. And it kind of just disappears off in the distance here. So I get much smaller brush strokes there, much less paint. And then as I work my way back, kind of fill in over here. So again, you'll discover what works for you, what you like. It may look different than the painting. It may look different than mine, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of bring the same sort of thing in down from here. The next step will be to mix a purple. Um, so you're going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and a little bit of white, and mix them together. Again, if you make a color that's too dark or that you don't like, you can try to work with it a little bit, but, but don't be afraid to just start all over again. 
Um, again, you don't need a ton of paint on your brush. I'm still using my medium brush. Um, and then I'm just bringing this into a few areas um, surrounding the clouds that we've been painting on. So. So the next step will be to fill in um, some of the darker areas. So these are some of the areas that are um, behind the trees. Well, it looks like maybe some dirt areas uh, or some mulch even. Um, and for this, we are going to use, um, I'm using my smaller brush. It's not a very small brush. So if yours is very small, maybe use your medium brush. Um, and I'm just going to take a hint of water into my black paint, because my black paint's a little bit thick. So I'm gonna take it over into a spot on my palette paper. And I'm actually gonna uh, bring a little bit of yellow into it. Again, just a dab. Um, you'll see my brush here. I literally just dabbed it in and then I pull it right into the black. And then I'm gonna bring a hint of red. Again, it's a really small, tiny bit. I'm going to mix that right in there. And this way it's not a stark black. Um, make sure you mix enough. And you can always bring a little more black, a little more yellow, and a little more red into it. And it doesn't have to be a ton of paint here either. So I'm dipping into red and yellow again. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill in some of these areas um, that are behind the trees. And then I actually am going to put a little bit in by the flowers just so that um, kind of marks what we'll be doing later on. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in these areas here. And then I'm actually going to use this um, to go right on in here between the trees up top as well. Again, keep in mind we'll actually be adding some trees back here that we didn't draw in. So the next step is to bring in a brown color. Um, and all I'm going to do is take more red and more yellow and bring it into the color that I've already been using. So this time be a little more generous with how much you're bringing in. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, but I'm going to bring in just more yellow and more red. If it seems a little weird of a color, you probably need a little more yellow. Um, and you can always bring a little more black into it as well. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and fill in right underneath it. And again, you want to make sure you have enough paint on your brush to really fill this area in. I don't want to see too many brush strokes, but if you have them, that's also fine as well. Bring it right down to the edge of the flowers for now. You could even paint right across your tree trunks if you wanted. Uh, I'm going to try not to here, but I don't really want to leave any white areas showing. Thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take this dark brown color and we're going to bring it into these lines a little bit. Um, I'm not going to do every line, so I'll just guide you through it. Again, I'm still using my small brush. Um, I'm going to do this middle line here. I'm not going to go 
and snick the whole way through. So I'm going to start thick at the bottom and then I'll just do a little bit. Hold through above that. I'm going to add some more paint. I'm going to bring it in thick here. I'm just going to thin it out as I go up again. I'm going to mirror the same thing on the other side. Thick at the bottom. Same as I go up. And then the next ones, I'm just going to bring it in at the top part a little bit. Okay, and then the last place we're actually going to bring this brown into will be the trees. So I actually need to mix a little more paint. So I'm going to bring black, yellow, and red. Little more yellow. I'm still using my smaller brush and I'm just going to bring this into the trees a little bit. This is going to be part of the underpainting, so you won't really see it um, once we get further into the painting. But I'm just going to kind of give some of these brush strokes here. Just kind of hit the left side and the bottom part. Again, this is going to look a little bit weird, but this is just going to be underneath. You won't, nobody would really know that you did this once you're done with the painting. And then I'm actually going to bring it um, back here as well. So as we prepare to do these trees behind, I'll have this kind of brown base here as well to guide us. You'll see I'm just doing these quick little brush strokes. Um, the edges of the trees are kind of rough, so that's how I'm treating them. And right now it looks like we just have these weird hairy trees. Um, so I'm going to clean my brush. If you filled up your palette like I did, you may want a new paper plate or a new palette paper. I'm going to go ahead and dry my brush. And then we're actually going to start to mix some green. So to make green, we mix blue and yellow together. So I'm going to take blue to start. And you're going to want to mix a good amount of this. It's okay if you have to remix, that's always fine. But you're going to want to mix a good amount. So mostly blue, a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to make this really nice green. So this is the green that I have. Um, and what we're going to do is start to fill in our trees. So this is one of those things where you work with your brush strokes. Um, you kind of test them out, see what you like. You have four trees plus the trees behind. So hopefully by maybe the second tree, you've really kind of figured out the brush stroke that you like. Um, I'll keep mine very quick and just kind of these small brush strokes. Um, to kind of mimic, mimic the leaves, but you'll, you'll work through this process. Um, try not to get frustrated because you'll rework it a couple times, but then the other key is not to overwork it. So I'm going to go ahead and pretty much fill in these trees quite a bit. I think I want to lighten my color even a little bit more and bring a little bit of water into it. I'm not really bringing white into it right now more just yellow into that blue color. I want these to be pretty vibrant. And then once you've settled in on the green that you like, you can go ahead and start filling them in. Um, similar brush strokes to what I was doing before. So 
And again, you want to see the brush strokes because that's how you're going to really create um, this idea of leaves here. And I'm going to be a little more heavy with my paint application as well. Um, you know, not quite like what we did with the sky. I'm going to go right over the brown. I'm getting these little brush strokes moving in all sorts of directions. And again, you just want to experiment a little bit here until you kind of find one that you like. So I kind of am making X's. I'm going right on over the black, right on over the brown. I'm filling in the entire tree. And in areas where I don't see the brush strokes as much, I might come back in and make them with a little more brush strokes. Make sure you come right on over the black as well. All right, so we're going to go tree by tree. Um, and I recommend filling them all in with this green first. And then we're going to come in and bring um, a lighter color into it. And then we're going to do the trees behind. So um, I'm not going to show you each one. But again, work through your process. Take your time. You'll figure out what kind of brush strokes you like. It's okay to come back and rework a tree. All right, so once you have all of your trees painted with this uh, medium kind of green color, what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring in a brighter green. Um, color and give these trees a little bit more dimension um, and be able to define some of the leaves a little better. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, again very little amount, just stabbing my brush. I'm going to actually bring that into the green color that we created. Using my small brush here and I'm just going to bring it into a few specific locations. So again you want to look um, you want to look at your photograph to reference exactly where you want to bring it. Um, I'm actually going to bring also a little bit of yellow into this color as well, just to keep it nice and bright. So on the first tree, head on to this bottom right area. Again, similar brush strokes to before. I'm not filling in my whole tree, so we definitely don't want to do that here. I kind of hit the bottom right, hitting that top right area, and then a little bit into the middle, and then a little bit up top here. Again, experimenting with your brush strokes. Make sure you like what you're seeing. So we brought a little bit into this bottom right area, this top right area, and then kind of top left bit. And that comes off the camera. So this is going to help give it a little dimension. We're just going to keep moving across the canvas to the next tree. So this is a good point in time where you want to take a step away and get some distance from your painting because you'll be able to see the dimension a little better that way. Um, maybe take a sip of your drink and just take a little moment um, to see all the work that you've put into this. 
The next step will be to do the trees that are behind the ones that we just created. So to mix this color, what we're going to do is on another part of your palette, you're going to take blue again as a base, bring in some yellow, and then you're going to bring in the smallest amount of black. So again, very, very small amount. If you bring in too much, you may have to um, start over again. And it's going to make a nice dark green. If it feels too dark, you can bring a little more yellow into it. I would not recommend bringing white into it because it'll make it very gray. And so I'm just going to come in behind and right over the brown that we did. I'm going to pay attention to this edge that I'm creating at the top. I'm going to make sure that that looks pretty tree-like. Um, and again, referencing the photo. Bringing that right across. Move on to the next part. I'm bringing it right over the brown that we had put on there at the base. Again, it's finding your rhythm and the brush strokes that you like. It should be kind of consistent with the ones you've been doing. Make sure you have a good amount of paint on your brush as well. So these are technically the trees that are behind the ones that we just created. I'm moving pretty quick because I like to do these quick little brush strokes if I move slower. Um, I find that I make them more consistent when I move quicker, it's a little more natural. You can work your way back in, make sure you like kind of the tops of the trees a bit. And then I will bring in a little bit of yellow into the color that we just made. Just bring a hint of dimension in. And again, I'm just kind of hitting that top right edge of these. That we just did. Just that top right edge. All right, and that's pretty much our trees. We just have to do the trunks and then we'll move on into the flowers. So go ahead, clean your brush. And we're going to mix um, a light brown for the tree trunk. So what we'll do for this is do a little bit of yellow and red, bring a little bit of black into it. Similar to what we did before when we made some brown. We're actually going to bring a little bit of white into it because this is a little more gray. And then um, I'm still using my small brush. I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the trunks of the trees. Just make sure you don't have any white showing. You know, take a look after you fill them in. You might want to go back in again a little bit. And then I'm actually going to bring a little white into that last color that we did. Still using the small brush. And I'm just going to bring that down the right side of each trunk. All right, and that's your tree trunk. Pretty simple. So now we're getting ready to add a little bit of grass to the bottom of the trees and then we're going to head right on into our flowers. So again, if you need a new palette paper or a new paper plate, go ahead and get one. We're going to mix a nice green here um, and we're actually going to use that same green for uh, the stems of the flowers. So we're going to start with blue, bring in some yellow. You can be a little more generous with the yellow here because we're going to make it a little bit brighter than some of the greens that we've been using. 
And we will bring a little bit of white into there. Make a nice green. I'm still using uh, my small brush, but you could actually transition to your medium brush here. So I'll go ahead and do that with my, my brush. I'm using a medium brush here. Um, and I'm just going to kind of fill in here a little bit of grass. That's our grass. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is start to do some of our stems. Um, you can use your little brush, you can use the edge of your medium brush. So I have kind of a nice sharp edge on my medium brush. So I'm actually going to use that for mine here. And um, for this, it's, it's almost like these straight um, vertical lines. And we're going to bring color back in over them. So don't be afraid to make them look kind of weird here. So I'm just taking this color and I'm doing these more straight uh, lines. They're much more vertical than we did with the tree, which was more of an X. Um, and I'm bringing, starting at the center, and I'm going to go on each side of this brown line that we did. So again, it's, I'm almost making it look like grass. Again, it might look um, like something you did in elementary school, but it's just to get it started. All right, so everything's filled in. Um, We'll be bringing a little more of this dark color back in. It'll be a little closer to a black. Um, but this is how we're building our dimension. And then we're actually going to build up and um, start painting our flowers. So that'll be exciting. And that's really going to pull the whole painting together. Um, and for that, we're going to mix a lot of different colors. So again, you may want a new paper plate um, or a new palette paper. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush and dry it off and I'm going to get a new palette paper. So for this next step, we're going to start with a, a pink color and we're going to use it to fill in most of these top areas. Um, I'm going to start with a white base. I'm going to bring in some red. And I'm just going to make sure I have a good amount of it. I'm using my smaller brush here. Um, just because, again, it doesn't have a super flat tip. It kind of has a more round tip, and that's what we're looking for here, something that's a little more rounded up top. I'm going to bring in a good amount. And this is another point in time where you can customize your painting. Um, maybe you want this to be a little more red than pink. Um, up to you. I'm bringing a good amount of white and red together. So this is... The color that I'll be using. Um, and for this, I'm just going to start to kind of fill it in a bit. And this is more dabs. Um, again, like I said, I'm going to really fill in more with the pink and then bring the other colors in um, into that. So this is kind of my base again. I'm coming right up to the edge of our grass marks that we made, which are the stems. I'm kind of creating more of a rounded edge here. And I'm going to do this to each area. And if we lose some of the green, we can always bring it back in. That's not a big deal. Again, I'm just kind of dabbing it and moving quickly because I like it to look a little imperfect. And I'm coming up onto this grassy area that we created. Um, not covering it completely, but a good amount. So 
like I said, I'm going to use this and we will have no more white on our canvas very soon. So take your time to figure out, again, the kind of brush strokes that you like. I always recommend moving a little quicker than slower just because it's a little less perfect that way and that's how nature is. Alright, so got it nice and filled in here. And I'm going to clean off my brush. And then we're going to bring a purple color into this now. So for that, I'm going to um, get some blue and some red. So again, I'm going to take blue and red, mix them together. There'll, there'll be a little more blue than red here. Make this purple color. I'm going to bring a hint of white into it. So get it to a color you like. Again, this is the part where you can kind of customize it a little bit. Maybe you want it to be a little more pink than purpley. I'm um, bringing some white into it. Too much white now, so I gotta bring back in more blue. And then I'm actually gonna clean my brush because it's getting kind of, um, has too much paint on it. So for this, we're gonna make, we're not gonna fill in like we did with the pink. These marks are a little more sporadic. Um, you want to pay attention to the photo here. With the pink, you can just kind of fill it in. For this part, you want to pay a little more attention. Um, again, it's just kind of figuring out what you like. So I'll go one row at a time and fill it in and bring the purple into each one. Um, I'm keeping these. Again, I'm doing some dots here. Just kind of these splotches in certain areas. So... Starting with the right side, making sure I have enough paint on my brush. Again, it's that similar brush mark, kind of these rounded dots. And I'm just kind of, ultimately we're filling in a lot of the pink, but we also want to make sure we still see some of the pink. We also don't want everything to be perfectly even. So we don't want each row to match. We don't want whatever's on the left of the row to match whatever's on the right of the row either. So that's just kind of a key thing you want to pay attention to as you're working. And if you do too much, you can always bring another color back in over it as well. So kind of working on my marks a little bit. I don't really love them. I want them to be a little more round and splotchy. All right, so once you get the purple in there, it's gonna look really splotchy. Um, but what I'm gonna do next is to bring in like a deeper pink. Um, again, you can customize it if you'd like. What I'm going to do is take a huge amount of red, mix it on my palette paper, and I'm going to bring a little bit of the purple into it, um, just to make it a little more of kind of this raspberry tone. Um, I'm going to clean my brush again because it's just a little too much paint that's on there. And just nice and get it nice and dry. Make sure you have a lot of paint mix. I'm just going to bring a little more in. Once again, red with a hint of um, some purple in there. You can even bring in a little bit of white, but I wouldn't bring in too much. Otherwise, it'll make it too light. So this is definitely darker um, than the light pink color that we did. And I'll just make sure I have a good amount on here. 
And this is again really sporadic. Um, you can reference the photo. And again, I'm doing these more um, like dots, I'd say. A lot of them are falling on the purple a little bit. And then I'm just going to bring them through here. So it's going to look real splotchy until we get a lot more colors on here. Um, but then it's going to start to fill in really nicely and look really beautiful and colorful. So I'm um, trying not to overdo it. Definitely important. Definitely, I'd say less of this color than there is of the purple. Um, again, you can reference your photo. You know, hitting certain spots. So you'll notice these are more like circles I'm creating. Certainly not perfect circles by any means. And then a little more sporadic. All right, so we got our light pink, our purple, and then our deeper pink on our canvas. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. And now we're going to work in a yellow. So we're going to bring some yellow over onto my palette paper. Mix it with some white. I think I'll add a little more white to it. Make a nice bright color. We're not going to see this in as many places again. Um, seems like we're getting, I guess, fewer and fewer places covered as we move on to each color. And this is also similar to our deep red where it is much more of these round dots than these splotches. All right, so we've gotten the yellow on, and then the next step is to bring in a white. So um, I'm going to get a little more white. I don't like to use it straight out of the bottle, so what I will do is bring a really, really small amount of the yellow that we just used into the white and just give it kind of that hint of off-white color. And then for this, I'm doing, again, it's more dots and less frequent. And I'm just continuing to go row by row. And this just helps break up any of these big patches of color that we've done. And you can reference the photo here if you'd like. And what we will be doing is coming back in um, to bring a little more grass in um, and then a darker color in between just to define some of these areas because it's just another step we need to do. That got a little bit lost and wasn't complete yet. So um, again, going row by row, taking your time. These are a little bit delib more deliberate marks, I would say. All right, so I have all the white marks in there. So as I mentioned before, um, I'm gonna come back in and just rework the pink a little bit. I don't really think it needs it, but um, just in case any of yours do, I'm going to remix the pink and then I'm going to just come back in and make it a little more intentional 
swatchy. Um, instead of just such a solid color. So again, you don't want to overwork your painting. So don't feel like you need to do this. Um, working quickly here. Just making it consistent with my other marks. So I just brought it into a few spots. So now I'm going to clean my brush and we're going to actually um, rework some of the stems. So we need some more blue paint. I like using my medium brush like I did last time, which now is covered in paint. <laughs> Let's clean that off. Um, my brush is clean from before, so Mixing blue, some yellow, bring in more blue. Oh, I'll bring in a hint of white. I think I still want a little more blue. And again, it's still doing that same line and just try not to come over um, your beautiful marks that you've made for the flowers, but just kind of bring it into a few spots. All right, so the last bit that I want to do is bring in almost like a black. So I'm actually going to take black and bring it right into that green color. I'm bringing a good amount of black in there, and then I'm bringing a hint of red in. It's going to help us make it look a little more brown. But again, it's it's almost a black. Um, and for this, you can use your small brush or your medium brush up to you. I'm just going to kind of bring it back into where we had placed. Um, that original brown color, bring a little water into it to kind of like bring it in. You don't want to overdo it here. A hint. Here. Again, you're really going to want to reference your photo for this or see where I'm bringing it in. Should be a pretty thin line. Going back here a little bit. It's stronger in the middle, and then it just kind of is at the top edge of each other section. All right, so we're just about there. The key to remember with acrylic is that it dries, so if there's anything you wanted to fix or rework, you could. This is definitely the time where you want to get up, take a step back, and look at it from afar. And like I said, you can always come back in and fix anything. Um, and then the last step will be for you to grab your Sharpie. And I always recommend a Sharpie just because it's a cleaner line. 
And you can go ahead and sign your painting. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed today. I'm so grateful that you joined me. Um, and I'm sure you made a beautiful piece of artwork. So I hope you had some time to relax and just get lost in it. And um, hopefully you'll show us what you've created. All right. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Stay healthy and well.